If y'all have watched the videos, y'all know what oil that I've been running. I don't want to get into oil recommendations, so y'all do what you want. I need to take out these two bolts here to loosen up the cam chain tensioner. It's a good idea to go ahead and loosen this bolt while everything's still bolted down. And then you're going to want to do these two and those two, the big ones. And then down inside here is two more. You've got one there and one right there. All right, so I got my cam tower slash head stud bolts off and they do have washers underneath them so be sure and don't drop one of those down inside your engine because that would just not be any good so now what i need to do is uh i need to get my chain off of my cam gear so this is the camshaft retainer bolt right here and the camshaft retainer hold down or I'm not really sure exactly what it's called that's what it does holds the camshaft in place so just showing you roughly how many threads are on that because you don't want to drop that down inside your engine and kind of being careful here because I don't want to drop it down inside mine while I'm trying to hold the camera it feels like it's getting pretty close. So I'm going to be careful. That's where I'm at right now. And it just came out. Maybe I can do this one-handed without dropping anything inside there. There we go. So that's what I took out. Your camshaft can wiggle out of there. And when it does, it'll drop down. And that'll help you get your chain removed from the gear so you can get a zip tie or a little wire or something and tie this up out of the way for right now I had a pair of jumper leads handy so I just hooked my cam chain around it and just clipped this one over there I could have clipped on to it I guess which after seeing that maybe I should have so let's just do that be right back all right, more secure now. I've got two clips on it, and I've just got it wrapped around here, so it won't fall. All right, so what I did was I just very gently pried right there and right under here on this side. Just kind of right like that, and that pried it up. They're gonna hold the camera with my knees here. You don't want to drop your camshaft. So let me go ahead and weasel my cam out. So the cam comes out just like that. I'm gonna set it down. Nice clean spot. There's two dowel pins, one right there and one right there. They go inside the cylinder head. You can see where they go. One's right here and the others cross over there. I don't think I'm going to be able to remove the cylinder head with one hand, so I'm going to have to probably tie these wires up out of the way a little bit and not drop my cam chain. So I need both my hands, and I don't have my uh, camera holder, so it's the best I can do. Okay, so I just got the head off. And that's the way that my combustion chamber looks. I have not touched it at all. My valves are actually pretty clean. This is with the 115 main jet and a PZ30 carburetor. 
There's a spark plug. It's not a whole lot of carbon buildup on this, so it really wasn't running too terribly rich. 8,700 miles. One thing to note, there's two dowels on the cylinder head. One is right there, and the other one is right there. That centers your cylinder head on the cylinder itself. I'm going to pull the cylinder head gasket off here. And once you do that, you can actually remove this front or forward cam chain guide. Couldn't show you before because the gasket was covering it, but it just pops out like that. The curved side goes towards the chain. So it goes in just like that. You can remove your cylinder now and it'll just slide straight up. Don't drop your chain down in your case. And then you can take the circlips off of your piston uh, around the piston pin that retains it and then you can just slide the pin out and you can remove the piston as well I uh, haven't decided if I'm gonna Continue messing around with the stock bore or if I'm gonna go ahead and do the big bore. I've got a 70 millimeter big bore kit um, I'll probably go ahead and just put that on but I was kind of wanting to do a little more testing on the stock bore first, but I may just do that with the other bike. We'll see Here's the cylinder after 8,702 miles and you can see the reflection all the way around. There's no scores, maybe just a hair right there. You can barely feel that. It's almost not there. See it, just barely. That's basically a Perfect condition cylinder right there. It's where the rings stop and the carbon builds up. Nothing wrong with that. I'd reuse that any day of the week. Virtually nowhere. There's the crank, nice and clean. Everything appears to be in good condition. There's no heat signatures on the crank around the rod or anything, so. These engines are tough, guys. I'm pretty impressed with them. So there's your circlip in that little trough right there. Oh, it's a little hard to see. It's silver in color. But it's right there. So let me see if I can move it for you just a little on camera here so you can see it. That's it right there. You can see how it starts to come up. Try not to flick it across the country here but I'm just trying to show you you see how it rises up right there what you want to do is get it out of that groove and then you can slide your pin out and the piston will come right off so you can see on this one a little better where that circlip ends now and what I try to do is I'm going to try to move it down a little closer to this groove. I'm going to try to get that split right there about right here and then that way it'll pop up out of there nice and easy. Alright, so now I've got it where I want it. Let's see. Try not to scratch your piston up any more than is necessary but now I've got my end of it right there 
and I should be able to just pry it up and out of there kind of nice and easy but I'm gonna need both hands so I can't show you but you can see how it just pops up definitely want to pack your engine with rags like I've got mine done here both sides if that little clip goes flying you certainly don't want it in your engine so what I do is I keep my thumb over it until I get it to this position and then I'll grab it with my other hand and I'll just kind of walk it out around I'll try to do it one-handed so I can show you not sure how that's gonna work Probably not very well, but yep, I got it. So I was able to do it one-handed there. And that's what your keeper looks like. And now you should be able to simply push your piston pin out towards the camera because we pulled that clip out. There's a clip in the other side. So let me see if I can stick my pinky in there and see if it'll pop out. Nope. I'll probably have to tap it just a little bit from the other side. So I've got a quarter inch Craftsman extension here. And it'll fit through the pin. What I'm going to try to do is just pull it out. Hopefully it'll come nice and easy. Kind of hard to do with one hand because it's slick. may have to tap it just a little bit from the other side. Let me use two hands, see what happens. See if we can get good old knee camera going here. Try to get you where you can see as best I can. Switch hands here. Maybe you can see a little better. So I'm just pushing from the back side and pulling at the same time here. There it comes. So what I'm going to do now is just pull on it. There it comes. So I've got the piston pin out. And the piston will come right off the connecting rod now. And we are removed. That's pretty clean for... The bottom side of a piston right there. There's the top. Looks really good. I'm going to take my piston pin and stick it back in the piston exactly as it came out. What I like to do when I'm putting my uh, piston back together in the cylinder is I'll take the circlip and stick it on the inside so you don't have to reinstall it and you won't lose it that way. So then I'll just pop this back in there. Let me see if I can hang on to it. Get it pushed back in so it's nice and seated. Can't lose your little circlip that way. It won't come off. And you can just kind of rock it back and forth nice and easy until it gets centered in there. And you can leave it all just like that. Nothing will get lost. Nothing will get broke. So this is basically what your engine should look like before you get ready to reassemble. All your mating surfaces need to be clean, dry, and... Uh, don't leave anything on there or it's going to have a leak. Just wanted to share with you some of my new Go Fast goodies here for the XR150L. Got a cylinder head with a 36 millimeter intake valve, 31 millimeter exhaust valve. I've got a cylinder that's 70 millimeters uh, bore diameter. I have a piston that is forged and it is 70 millimeter bore also for the cylinder. It is also 11 to 1 compression. 
these run a 14 millimeter wrist pin and I have a stage three high performance camshaft. So all of that will be going in here shortly.